From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Ernie DeCiccio, and our homilist today is Deacon Robert Kinghorn. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Diane and Paul from Surrey, British Columbia. This Mass is offered for their living and deceased family members, for their own personal intentions, and in thanksgiving for the Daily TV Mass. On behalf of all the faithful across Canada gathered for this celebration, we thank Diane and Paul for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. As we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this uh, memorial of St. Pius X, we take a moment to give thanks to our God for his blessings to us. And we also ask the Lord for mercy and for peace. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who to safeguard the Catholic faith and to restore all things in Christ, filled Pope St. Pius X with heavenly wisdom and apostolic fortitude, graciously grant that following his teaching and example, we may gain an eternal prize. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Judges. All the lords of Shechem and Beth Milo came together, and they went and made Abimelech king by the oak of the pillar at Shechem. When it was told to Jotham, he went and stood on the top of Mount Gerizim and cried aloud and said to them, Listen to me, lords of Shechem, so that God may listen to you. The trees once went out to anoint a king over themselves. So they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. The olive tree answered them, Shall I stop producing my rich oil by which gods and mortals are honored and go to sway over the trees? Then the trees said to the fig tree, You come and reign over us. But the fig tree answered them, Shall I stop producing my sweetness and my delicious fruit and go to sway over the trees? Then the trees said to the vine, You come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Shall I stop producing my wine and cheers, gods and mortals, and go to sway over the trees? So all the trees said to the bramble, you come and reign over us. But the bramble said to the trees, If in good faith you are anointing me king over you, then come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, let the fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. The word of the Lord. Set 
a crown of fine gold on his head. He asked you for life, you gave it to him. Length of days forever and ever. Lord, your strength gives joy to the King. His glory is great through your help. Splendor and majesty you bestow on him. You bestow on him blessings forever. You make him glad with the joy of your presence. Lord, your strength gives joy. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily rate wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go out into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us. We have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did we not agree with, uh, with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. The quality of mercy is not strained. 
it droppeth a gentle rain from heaven. Don't worry, you haven't missed the TV mass and gone to the Shakespeare Channel. <laughs> but uh, this quote from Shakespeare, The Merchant of Venice, it shows that Shakespeare is a good playwright, but I think there's something lacking in his theology, don't you? Huh? God's mercy doesn't gently fall from heaven like rain. God's mercy pours down upon us, doesn't it? It absolutely smothers us and makes us so wet with love and friendship and joy. So this parable today we heard of the landowner and the workers really talks about God's mercy and forgiveness, how it pours out upon each one of us. The problem when we hear a parable, any parable really, is that we think with human terms, don't we? We think about it and we say, uh-huh, uh-huh, got that, got What? God did this? What kind of a God would do that? And that's what we hear in this parable as well, I think. Uh, we hear uh, this parable about people at the end being paid the same as the people at the beginning. But we listen to the parable with our human thoughts of justice. But in this parable, God's mercy and justice intertwine. This is where they meet. And we hear that God's mercy and justice falls upon the good and the bad, the worthy and the unworthy, the first and the last. Now, here's what happened in this parable. You know, it said that when they needed to get workers, they went out to the, uh, to the center of the town, people hanging around, and they went out five times, it said. So they went out in the morning, and who did they think they got? All the strong people, all the people who were all ready for it. And guess who was left at the end of the day? When they went out the final time, it was all the weak, the poor, the people were overlooked in society. These were the ones, and they said they wanted to work. They said, we're here, but no one will hire us. This is the beauty of this parable, one of the most beautiful parables about the mercy of God. God said to them, the landowner, come on, I'll invite you in, and I'll treat you exactly the same as all of the rest. You see, this is what God's mercy is like. But this happens in our society as well. You know, a job posting goes up and all the, the good-looking people are all lined up with their suits and dresses on, and the, some people are there with denims and a T-shirt. And they come in for the job interview, and they, they look at the person interviewing and says, hmm, I see you haven't worked for a while, have you? I see you worked for 40 years and you were laid off, and you're, oh, you're 60 years old. Next. And then the next person comes in, they say, oh, I'm very honest about your resume here. It says you have a disability and you can't really work the same as others all day long. Next. You see, this is what it is about. About the ones called at the end, the ones who are in many ways disabled or poor and sick, they are given equal call to God's mercy. We're all called into this together. This is the mercy of God that falls on the worthy, the unworthy, the good and the bad, the first and the last. And I think in many ways, we are all these people called at the 11th hour. I think there's been times in our life we've all been overlooked. We've all wondered, will God even choose me because of my sins? Maybe my sins now or my sins of my past life. Will God select me? This beautiful parable we hear today is a magnificent image of what God's mercy, not just trickling down from heaven, but pouring upon us. And today, the proof of that is we're all here today to celebrate together, to celebrate this Eucharist with Father Ernie today. And we are all called we're all called, no matter what, uh, how, where we're rich or poor, where we're sick, and we're all equally called to this banquet. That is the beautiful mercy and forgiveness of God in all of our lives. We know so often to be at this banquet of the Eucharist, we are not worthy. But today, 
God says to each one of us, I call you, I call to you, you to this banquet, and I am making you worthy. It's my mercy and forgiveness that calls you to this Eucharist. And for that, all we can ever say is thanks be to God. And now, let us join in prayer. Let us join in prayer to this almighty God of mercy and forgiveness that we have and put our, our intentions before the Lord. The Lord hears the cry of the poor, so let us now turn to Jesus the Messiah, the one who intercedes for us as we offer our prayers to the Father in his name. Let us pray for the whole church that when we see injustice, we may never be afraid to put out into the deep waters of the world to live the gospel of Christ with mercy and love. Let us pray to the Lord. For those looking for employment, that they are not discouraged when they are overlooked, and that they will continue to believe that God will lead them to a grateful landlord who will see their gifts of faithfulness and perseverance. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who feel imprisoned by being isolated and alone, that they will feel the presence of Jesus in their own prayers and through the presence and prayers of others. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all those in the daily TV mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially for families, that they find peace both in times of blessing and of difficulty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, your Son Jesus came to bring abundant life. Grant that as we hear his words and receive him in the Eucharist, we may follow his way of love and service in our daily lives. We ask this through Christ, our merciful Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with kindness our oblations and grant, O Lord, we pray, that following the teachings of Pope St. Pius, we may celebrate these divine mysteries with sincere reverence and receive them in a spirit of faith through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
For as on the festival of St. Pius X, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Pius X and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's join together in prayer using the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Oh, dear, may peace of Jesus always thank you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Celebrating the memorial of Pope St. Pius, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the power of this heavenly table, we may be made constant in the faith and be of one accord in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for prayers are included in our Prayer Intentions book and shared with all of our celebrants.